Dear Nani, I miss you a lot. Luckily, because I took your china and some other nice Le Creuset items from 89 Belmont Circle, I actually get to think about you every day whenever I'm cooking food, which I might have done anyway, but it helps to have the props. I was thinking recently of how lucky I was when I first moved to New York, now 12 years ago, to have you and Aunt Anne so nearby because it meant that I could hop on the train and visit you when I didn't have anything else to do in the city, which was most of the time. I remember you guys were both shocked that I lived in a loft with five other girls and that we all managed to get along, especially with only one bathroom. And the best part of those visits was having you guys drink your Manhattans and make me a Manhattan too. I really felt like I was part of the club. I remember you told me a story about getting in trouble on an airline because you and Anne, or possibly just you, had brought your own flask of pre-mixed Manhattan onto the plane and were told that you're not supposed to bring your own booze on the plane. But I think they let you get away with it because you were so charming. I think of you whenever I bake cookies or bake anything. You've taught me so many things from how to even up a cup of flour. So this is how Nani taught me. You don't want to pack it in, but you do take the back of the knife and you just level the cut so that it's, see how nice and flat it is? I think I use something you taught me about cooking every single day in my life. So here's to all the food and all the memories and I miss you and I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Dear Nani, as I sit here in Poppy's red chair and summer is right around the corner, I think of the summers that we spent together all of the eating and the various things we did. I can't go to an outdoor outlet mall without thinking of you and Ann Ann and our lunch that day in Riverhead of peanut butter on saltines. We had many different meals those summers and I always watched you make them in the kitchen. No matter how hard I try, there are some things I will never be able to replicate. And believe me, I've turned into a food nerd. I cook and I test constantly. You can ask Katie, but whether it be your pizza or your tuna sandwiches, I can never get it just right. Steve and I always talk about the night we spent with you during a golf trip, where we come in late, you had flour all over the kitchen and yourself, but you had pizza all ready to go in the oven when we walked in the door. And as per usual, we ate everything. I still use the cavatelli maker you gave me, and like my father at my age, when I go on a trip, it's normally the first thing I pack in the car. Now, it's not all about food, even though our family loves to talk and dream about it constantly. Since I have a house of my own now, there are many things in it that remind me of you and 89 Belmont Circle. I have your dining set all set up and was able to repurpose the china closet. We've had plenty of meals around this table with friends and family in our home, and I feel that the table feels right at home. There is something special about the house itself though, and the minute I saw it, I knew this was the place to be. I walked upstairs and lo and behold, there was a nice big attic fan. And I immediately talked about how we used to have this thing on every night during the first summer before you decided to surprise everyone with your AC. After a few fall and spring nights, Katie has finally realized why I was so excited about a fan. Having the house also reminds me of the many projects we did, but I will never forget how proud you were when I painted the doors that led under the patio. You always told me how you would say, my grandson painted these, or would show people how much nicer they looked now that they were clean and painted. You always appreciate the simple things in life and I carry that with me all the time. Thank you for everything. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Nan. Hey, I miss you every day. I cherish all of the time we were able to spend together, especially in the summertime. You inspired my love of patio chilling and evening cocktail hour. Nobody knows this, but Nani gave me my very first shot of vodka. You showed me how to recognize which were the well-made shoes by looking at the stitching to differentiate which were, as you would say, garbage. This lesson was post Purple Boots era, of course. The summers that we spent apart, we were pen pals while I was at summer camp. There was no gum allowed but you would always tape a piece inside and mail to me to be sneaky. 
I loved being your pen pal because you had the most beautiful handwriting and you always wrote me back. Love you, Elizabeth. Happy Mother's Day. Dear Nani, March is always a special month because it always reminded us of you. Celebrating you every year and the gift of life you gave to all of us Tortorichis. Today, I think back on all the amazing times that we shared together over the years, which made me laugh, smile, and shaped me as a person. The one that stands out above all else is the love of food and cooking, namely homemade pasta and homemade pizza. You were always so patient with me and everyone else when I would claim, I did it, and you would reassure me with, you're doing it. Whether we were in New York, Florida, Arizona, California, or elsewhere, those moments remain the most dear in my memory. Every time I muster up the motivation to create an Italian dish from scratch, I can hear your voice repeating in my head as I go through each step. You're doing it. Your legacy will always live on in all of us Tortoricis, every day of our lives. And for that, thank you, Nani. Dear Nani, looking back at all the photos and thinking of all the memories of you with everybody in the family, it's clear to see of how much of inspiration you were and still are to us all. You have taught me so many things, but one thing that always comes to mind is patience is a virtue. You would always tell me, patience, patience, patience. Anybody who knew me as a young child knew that you had to have a lot of patience to deal with me, so I know you had no shortage of that. I remember growing up in Garden City and always being really excited whenever I would hear that we were going to your house for dinner, holidays, or any other reason. No dunk. Okay, which junk do you want? Uh, uh, that. that kind of junk? This junk? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This one. Junk. I want this. Hey, it's, 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 it's that noise. What's that noise? <laughs> it's making, making that noise. No, it's not making any noise. What do you call that, James? What do you call that? <laughs> Yeah, but then I might get dizzy, so I might have to stop. So we can do it one more time. All right. Okay. <laughs> From making pizza and soft pretzels and making me try food that I'd never tried before growing up, you've been such an inspiration to me in the kitchen, and I'm glad to have a few of your cookbooks to go by for guidance. I have countless memories of you growing up from playing the card game War and me beating you because I had all the picture cards, giving you some pointers on your new iPad and sharing a few Manhattans once I was age. I'm so thankful for every one of them. Thank you, Nani. Your legacy lives on. Dear Nani, I feel so lucky that we got to have you as long as we did. Nani, I am thinking about the Hawaii trips you took with us and how every afternoon we would go to you and Poppy's hotel room and color in Aladdin and Lion King coloring books and drink Shirley Temples, which you somehow magically knew how to make. Uh, Nani, everything you made was magical, from cavatelli to chocolate chip and rucola cookies to pizza that smelled so insanely delicious coming out of the oven. Nani, I remember you and Anne speaking in a Sicilian dialect one night when we were in France and the way that you both climbed a million steps to get to Plage Mala, I think it was called, and when you were 80 something. Nani, I remember you asking me the last time I saw you, do you know Broccoli Robbie? And I said, no, who's he? And you and Anne laughed at me. Nani, I remember going to the Rockettes with you and Dana 
and all of our magical trips to the city, the Jekyll and Hyde restaurant, the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, and how you came on the college tour with me and my mom. And when we went to the Sondheim show at Carnegie Hall with the cousins, Nani, I remember the first time I heard Elizabeth talking about you and how she said, I'm gonna go see Nani. And until then, I hadn't realized that she also had you as Nani and that it wasn't just me and Dana and that this you were something we shared with all of the cousins. Before that, I didn't get that. And Nani, I remember trips to the park in Syosset and looking through my dad's yearbook and your red light bathroom and the smell of your basement and hearing about how you and Poppy got married and all of the boys' births and seeing the pictures of the four boys in order. Nani, we won the lotto getting to have you. Thank you, Nani. Dear Nani, it's hard to even know where to start, but the first thing that does come to mind is food, amazing food. Waking up to the smell of Italian toast, then continuing the day with pizza, cavatelli, pastina, mock meatballs, cookies, to name a few. My first memory of going to Trader Joe's is with you, and that obsession has not left me at 23. I think of the fond memories running around the yard and hanging out with the neighbors. I think about lovely walks around Belmont Circle and that playground I wanted to go to every day. I know I spent hours in your basement playing with all the toys and puzzles. Going to New York always has and will be special. I recreated a photo of you in Central Park and it always puts a smile on my face. I know in 99% of the photos growing up, it appears that I am not having fun, but I can assure you, I was. <laughs> I think about you every day as I drive around in a Nissan Altima. It's named May, by the way. I've kept a lot of your car the same. Sometimes when I'm having a rough day, I'll listen to the Jimmy Durante CD or Caitlin's lovely cover of Part of Your World. Sometimes I wear your sunglasses when I forget mine. <laughs> I think of you every morning when I use your teacups for my espresso. A lot of my kitchen supplies came from 89 Belmont Circle. You are an inspiration to all, and your legacy lives on. Dear Nani, I miss you. I wish you were still here to be part of this stage of my life. Come visit the house I just bought and meet the cutest dog in the world, Brunello. I think about you often, of course when I'm cooking, and while I love learning all the tricks and tips from you over the years, I think one of my favorite memories was teaching you a new recipe and cooking for you. I visited one summer and I decided to make you enchiladas, which you absolutely loved. I remember we made extra so you could keep them in the freezer and reheat them for an easy meal one night when you needed it. Um, and then it was probably a few summers later where I came to visit and I stayed with you for a couple weeks and you asked me to cook the enchiladas again for one of the famous Thursday night dinners so you could introduce Aunt Anne, Uncle Vinny, and Barbara to them. It was so much fun. They all loved them. I think we had some margaritas that night and we had so much fun. It was a night I'll never forget. Your legacy lives on in me. Thanks for all the memories, Nani.